What's going on, guys? All right, you got Jesse with fling bows here. And uh, uh, let me move some stuff out of the way. I have been battling with this U wood flat bow to get it bent how I want it for a long time now. Uh, literally several weeks. Uh, you can see uh, the, the reflex tips, which were way up here. And have, you know, I used steam to bend it all the other times. I've re steam bent these reflex tips probably three times each. Uh, and, and it had a sidewards bend in the bow this way, like hooked, you know, this way. Uh, so bad that if I'd have strung it, it would have tried to flip around on me. Um, you know, three inches out of whack here. So I'm trying to get it to where the string would be centered on the bow. There's a little bit of twist in this limb closest to us, but I really don't care about that. Uh, you know, I've had twisted limbs before and it doesn't usually affect anything. As a matter of fact, usually as you shoot the bow, it kind of comes out of it a little bit. And even if it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, at least not to me. I don't mind. If it's real bad propeller twisted, uh, you can you can hang a wrench on it and heat it and twist it. But anyway, I'll get to that in a minute. I might have to do that with this one because it is pretty substantial. See, that's straight. And then this is, <laughs> you should be looking at it at this angle right here. But you're not you know so anyway but man I've steam bent this sucker probably five times getting it to bend this way you know sideways and uh, it just keeps coming back so this time I broke out the heat gun and uh, I heated it I, I basically put it to where it is and then I used a ratchet strap and strapped it down and uh, you know put a vise on this end to hold this end down and then I basically heated from like right here all the way to the top of the handle heavy duty I mean I really heated it I mean it was boiling the grease and then I heated it for another five minutes I managed not to scorch it anywhere but I just heated it and heated it I actually heated it until the grease dried off of it I just used coconut oil um, you know any oil works you basically you're just trying to keep it from scorching the wood and the oil helps the the heat penetrate deep into the fibers of the wood um, this sucker is cooling off pretty quick I can already keep my fingers on it a minute ago I couldn't even do this it was burning me so bad I really concentrated a lot of my heat right here um, just to you know get the job done I mean and if you look down this guy you can see that I've got it bent Oh, I don't know. I mean, it was three inches out of whack the other way, and it's about, well, you can see, an inch or so past where I really want it to be. And typically, that's what you're supposed to do. Now, I haven't really had to bend too much Northwest Pacific U wood. In fact, I only have really made one other U wood bow. It was an English longbow. Uh, and I just made it. I just made the bow, and... It had a little bit of natural reflex in the handle. Uh, now it has like a slight bit of reflex out of the handle and it deflexes a slight bit on the ends because you wood takes a fair amount of set. Uh, you know, Osage Orange doesn't really change too much. Uh, you might get an inch of set out of Osage uh, it, from my experience. Um, but with you wood, you seem to get some set out of it. And, that, and this stave was like severely curved it had a ton of deflex or set out of the gate. I mean, so this I did not deflex this at all. It came like that. Even when it was, you know, this thick of a stave, it was deflexed. So in order for it to really perform well, I need these tips to be flipped. You know, I need them to be recurved. Uh, a deflex reflex is a smooth shooting, fast shooting, great bow. So... Don't be turned off if your stave has natural set in it or deflex because you can reflex the tips and make it a great bow. Also, some straight up deflexed bows shoot great too. So you don't let any of that kind of stuff detour you from a stave at all, ever. Uh, secondly, you can see this de reflex tip here has came out a lot more than that one. You see that one still reflex somewhat. Uh, this one's came out a lot more, but this limb doesn't deflex as much either. So I'm still, I'm at the drawing board with this. But I've got my antler tips glued on. Um, I've got it 
heating and cooling now. Once it's totally cool here in about 30 minutes or so, I'm gonna take it off, flip it around, and I'm gonna do the same thing to this limb because this limb is it's got the same thing going on. It it it's sticking up too high where this pencil's pointing. It's sticking up that way too high. I need it to come down about to right there. You know, this limb isn't as bad. The real bad one's on the other end. But I'll see when I take it out of there how it all lines up. I might wait a day or two before I bend this one because I know that one's gonna come back a little bit, but with heat bending and not steam bending, I just don't know how much. Uh, I know with steam bending, it almost all came out. So I'm very unimpressed with steam bending. Now, uh, with these tips, just to show you guys what I'm gonna do with them, they're not finished. I'm going to be basically taking this pencil line here See if I can show you that off, and and but it's going to be a little bit more of a arc to it. That's that's kind of like a chop off. It's not going to be like that. It's it's going to be a little bit of a bend, you know, like a brrrr, and uh, all rounded down, smooth and nice. And the same thing on this one. Uh, it's going to come down, you know, something like that. So that that can give you an idea of what it's hopefully going to look like at the end of it all smooth right into that antler you know just just i want it to look like you know whoosh i cut the uh i did cut the the top back i've put tip overlays on and i've never done this angle cut backwards before through the sap wood right here and uh into the heartwood even a little bit i've never done that before but i see a lot of bowyers do it and um you know i did it it took a chance so hopefully it works out good but that's where I'm at with this. Uh, just wanted to do a little update uh, and show you guys where I'm at with my Northwest Pacific U Wood uh, flat bow. Um, and if we go in here, later on today I may start tillering this guy. This is the, uh, many of you guys have probably seen this bow. This is the rawhide back, all heartwood, OT the Iceman replica bow. Um, and basically, I just kind of stopped working on it. Uh, Daddy. Hold on, buddy. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, the, the I've kind of halted working on this for a while, and I started working on this uh, flat bow. Uh, there was really no reason behind it. This one's gonna be more of a challenging stave. Uh, as you can see, there's some serious knots in this piece of wood. Uh, there's some cracking that happened on the belly, which isn't a big deal, but this cracking on the side might be a big deal. I don't know yet. I don't know how deep it goes, and I really can't go much thinner than that. Uh, so that's cracking's kind of going to be there. I don't know what to do about that yet. Maybe put some epoxy in it. I, I don't know. Um, Maybe it's not a big deal because it's vertical. I don't know. I might just tiller the bow and see what happens. Uh, I may wrap some sinew around here in some spots once it's done tillered. Uh, and I might just make it look decorative like a real thin, totally wrap the whole limb, you know, a foot here. That whole area right there. And, uh, you know, where the crack is. It starts about here and it goes down to like this knot, basically. So if I were to wrap sinew just one layer real thin transparent almost right up there and then just do the same thing on the other end just for aesthetics it doesn't need it um you know wrap over this ugly knot or something and that's the thing too is about mid limb on both limbs there's a big nasty knot and uh, i just don't i don't know what to do with it yet but it is backed with rawhide and it should hold together pretty well you know, I was sent this stave as a challenge from my friend Dave out there at Medicine Bow Woods, and uh, he showed me a bow that he had made of all heartwood and made it into an Otzi the Iceman replica style bow. But the, the difference is, is I didn't notice a bunch of gigantic golf ball sized knots on his stave. <laughs> and uh, I hate wasting a piece of yew wood, so I'm, I'm going to make that a bow regardless. If I start thinking it's going to fail, then I'm going to change the design. You know, if it ends up being a Cherokee D bow made of all you wood heartwood, so what? You know, at least it'll be a fun build. And then I've got an ash bow here. I've either got to build my dad a maple bow 
sugar maple or an ash bow. This one right here is ash uh, because we got an upcoming coming hunting trip. And then uh, this is either going to, this is probably going to end up being my son's bow. It's a small little live oak stave. I was thinking about making it like a short bow and sinew back in it and all that, but I don't know. We'll have to see. It's really badly bent too. Sideways. Uh, a lot of my bows are ended up sideways bent. And then of course I've got this witch hazel stick here to build a bow out of. That'll be fun. And uh, But the one I'm going to be working on next is this one. And uh, that's a vine maple stave that has twisted grain. Um, and it's kind of became a problem. Uh, no worries, Dave from Medicine Bowwood is actually sending me another stave. Um, so uh, it, it, it's not twisted much, and I can still make a bow out of it, and I'm gonna. But, um, you know, it's slightly twisted, and posing a little bit of problems uh, he offered to send me another stave I actually declined uh, but uh yeah I guess that's it um, so yeah um, well actually I didn't totally decline this is what happened he offered to send me another stave uh, if I pay shipping and I told him that I will attempt to make a bow out of this and if it does not work then I will send him the shipping price and he can send me another bow stave of vine maple this one may become my dad's bow too i'm not sure and i'm probably going to send you back this which a sinew backed vine maple bow i'm not really sure how that's going to work or if it's going to make it sluggish if you guys know anything about that please let me know all right guys uh make sure you tune in for the next part of this uh you wood flat bow and uh soon i'm going to do some arranging and make some playlists up on my youtube page too so within a few months from now you should be able to go through everything like a playlist and watch, you know, an entire building a longbow series, an entire building the U wood flatbow series, part one through whatever. All right, guys, uh, get into the wood pile. Let's make some stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.